Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome back to our hadith class. We are doing the kitab known as Riyadh al-Salihin of Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah. And tonight inshallah ta'ala we are continuing on from the 169th hadith which we had stopped at the end of the last one last time. Yes. Okay, no, no. We are starting from a new chapter, not from the hadith itself. But anyhow, let us begin. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. So we are doing this chapter باب في وجوب الانقياد لحكم الله تعالى وما يقوله من دعي إلى ذلك وأمر بمعروف أو نهي عن منكر. The chapter with regards to the obligation of like of uh, you know, like uh, submitting yourself to the commands uh, of Allah Ta'ala. وَمَا يَقُولُهُ مَنْ دُعِيَا إِلَىٰ ذَلِكَ And what you say with regards to the one who calls towards it and he, uh, he commands with goodness or prohibits evil. They say, you know, أَمْرَ بِبَعْرُوفِ نَهِي عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Obeying the commands uh, of the Sharia. That's basically it in a nutshell. So as is the norm, Imam Nabawi Rahimahullah begins a chapter quoting the, uh, the ayat of the Quran. So he starts, he says, قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Very serious ayah in reality, even though people today have taken it very lightly. So in this ayah, Allah says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ Allah says, no, Allah takes an oath by himself. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ No, by your Lord. لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ They will not have iman. حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُكَ فِي مَا شَجْرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Until they come to you to be the, the hakam, to be the judge in فِي مَا شَجْرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Between that which comes about between them. In other words, when you have differences of opinion, uh, you have issues, then if you try and go to somebody else to resolve it instead of Rasulullah wasallam, then you have no iman. That's what uh, Allah was basically saying in this ayah. There's a lot of ahkam which can be derived from it, but let's continue on. Allah says, Shay fi ma shajra baynam. Thumma la yajidu fi anfusim haraja. They then, after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given a verdict, they do not find within themselves any haraj, meaning any dislike for the command that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given. You know, put it in this way, when you are having a dispute between yourself and the next person, uh, whether it be financial, whether it be uh, marital, whatever, 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 now you come and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said it's supposed to be A or the husband is right or the wife is right or whatever the case may be so you submit completely there and then without any haraj you know like uh, you know uh, uh, preference was given to him or why was he were why they were the rule in his favor or things of the sort that is deemed as being haraj you have this in the case today a man go a couple goes to an alim uh, whether it be a couple or a party two people having a dispute and then the alim say but uh, he's in the right you know you have to do this and then the person like ah what do you know and 
they reject it. And some will be like, okay, this is a knowledgeable sheikh and all. So, uh, you know, like I'll follow it, but I don't like it. It goes against my uh, grain, but I'll do it anyway. That sort of thing. That's the way that a lot of people are today. And Allah is condemning that sort of uh, behavior here. It does not... It was not restricted to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. That's why I say there are many ahkam which are derived from this ayah itself, which is that when a command has come from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa it forms part of sharia. There is no option. And that's why I gave one of those short audios a while back to say that uh, what's to the effect the title was there is no option in deen or words to that effect, which is, you know, in another ayah, Allah tells us that same point, which is the fact that you don't have a choice in the matter. When the, the reality is that only uh, the the commands of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's all that actually matters. Beyond that, nobody's opinion counts for anything. Today, everybody seems to think my opinion, but you know, like, but, but this and but that, there is no buts and no opinions, no personal opinions count for anything. So, anyway, I, I'm spending too much time on this point and I know uh, I'm digressing, but nonetheless, the point being that Allah is telling you that you don't find any haraj mimma qadayta in that which you have uh, ruled wa yusallimu taslima and they submit completely and wholeheartedly to it. So when you have a command and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you know like I say if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said grow your beard and you don't like it you uh, this is not even a the a case of a dispute between people. This is a clear-cut command and you're like, I don't like it, but why? But this, but that. Where do you fit in? When Allah has said, you don't have iman if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa judges against you and you and you don't submit to it. So, like I said, it's, there are a lot of such ayat in the Quran which are very strict and severe and yet people take it to be very light. You read it and you move on. Anyhow, moving on, it says, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى إنما كان قول المؤمنين إذا دعوا إلى الله ورسوله ليحكم بينهم أن يقولوا سمعنا وأطعنا وأولئك هم المفلحون. Allah says in this ayah of Surah An-Nur that إنما كان قول المؤمنين. What is the speech of the believers? The speech of the believers إذا دعوا إلى الله ورسوله when they are called to uh, to judge or to have Allah and His Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم to judge between them. Then they say, Sami'ana wa ata'ana wiyya and we obey wa ula'ika humul muflihun and they are the people who are successful. Meaning that if you are having an argument and somebody say, uh, the sharia says this and you say, no, I want what the western court have to say. You are not from the successful people. Maybe you may win the case in this world, but in the year after you are a failure, you are a loser and you've got problems on your head. So anyway, وَمَا يَقُولُهُ مَنْ دُعِيَ إِلَىٰ ذَلِكْ When you are called to it, وَأُمِرَ بِمَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ نُهِيَ عَنْ مُنْكَرٍ So, إِذَا دُعُوا إِذَا It's same like دُعِيَ There's a plural singular. So, what do you say? You say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We hear and we obey. Allah has said so. His Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم has said so. We hear, we obey. We don't uh, argue at all. وَفِيهِ مِنَ الْأَحَادِيثِ إِحَادِيثُ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ الْمَذْكُورُ فِي أَوَّلِ الْبَابِ قَبْلَهُ وَغَيْرُهُ مِنَ الْأَحَادِيثِ فِيهِ So Imam Nawawi رحمه الله he says in this chapter there are many ahadith. One such one is the hadith of Hadrat Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه from the previous chapter, the first hadith of this previous chapter and there are many others besides it. So just so you can go back, it was one of those that I, we said for a long time the, discussing the hadith but nonetheless This one year. This hadith here. Like I say, we spoke about it. This was about two weeks ago or so. But nonetheless, that is the hadith which he is referring to. That it is a... It's a, that hadith forms part and parcel of this chapter, but he put it in that chapter because it was more relevant to that one at that time. 
In any case, let's move on. He says, Hadith number 169. Anabi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qala, Lamma nazalat ala Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Lillahi ma fi samawat wa ma fi al-ard, Wa in tubdu ma fi anfusikum wa tukhfuhu, Yuhasibukum bihi Allah. When this ayah that I just recited, Lillahi ma fi samawat wa ma fi al-ard, What is in the heavens and the earth belongs to Allah. Wa in tubdu ma fi anfusikum wa tukhfuhu, Yuhasibukum bihi Allah. If you expose what is in your heart or you conceal it, Allah will take you to Allah will take you to uh, account with regards to it. So when this ayah was revealed, al ayah ishtada dalika ala ashabi Rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The ayah was very serious. It was very severe. You know, it it weighed a lot upon the Sahaba radhiyallahu anhum. فأتوا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ثم بركوا على الركبي. They came to رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم and then بركوا don't mean you're taking بركة. بركوا means you know like when you have a camel or whatever and it kneels down. So بركوا yeah means they kneel down على الركبي. They came and kneel down on their knees. And then فقالوا أي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So in other words, they came and they sat down in front of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. They didn't come and stand there and say, "Hey, I'm standing here by the door. Uh, I got an issue." They all came and they sat down. So they said, يا رسول أي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كلفنا من الأعمال ما نطيقه الصلاة والجهاد والصيام والصدقة. They, they said, يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم we have been tasked with certain a'mal which we are capable of doing, such as salah and jihad. Jihad, like I say, when spoken of in the sharia, it means fighting on the battlefield. Everything else is linguistics, but the shari'i meaning refers to fighting on the battlefield. So salah and jihad and fasting and giving sadaqah. We can hand, we, you know, we, we are able to do this. وَقَدْ أُنزِلَتْ عَلَيْكَ هَذِي الْآيَةَ وَلَا نُطِيقُهَا but they said, but Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this verse of the Qur'an was revealed upon you and we are unable, you know, we, 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 it's beyond our capabilities to handle. So, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أتريدون أن تقولوا كما قال أهل الكتابين كتابين من قبلكم سمعنا وعصينا بل قولوا سمعنا وأطعنا خفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير. قالوا سمعنا وأطعنا خفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير فلما 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 اقترأها اقترأها القوم وذلت بها ألسنتهم أنزل الله تعالى في إثرها آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمن أوكي let's read but by but so رسول الله صلى الله after they posed this question to رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم then رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said do you do you intend on speaking and saying like how the Ahlul Kitabain, Jews and the Christians, like how they had said uh, that سَمِعَنَا وَعَصَيْنَا We hear and we disobey. And, you know, I, I often made mention of this point that we today, that is us. We hear and we disobey. We hear uh, hijab is a, a an obligation in deen and we don't do it. We hear the beard is wajib and we don't do it. We hear we mustn't do this and we... Every single thing we hear and we disobey. Quran and Sunnah is there. Things are being translated. Lectures are being given, and we hear and we disobey. We show nobody a point by disobeying the commands of Allah. We only just dig a hole for ourselves. But in any case, so the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them rather what you should say is Samirna wa ata'na we hear and we obey. غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير. The غفرانك that you know the, uh, the you praise Allah, our Allah, wa ilayk al masir, and to you is our uh, return. In other words, Ya Allah, we are you know we hear and we obey. Yeah, we may not be able to do everything, but we are not going to be of those type of people who say no, we we can't do it. We do whatever we are capable of doing. We hear and we obey. When we fall short, we ask Allah for forgiveness. But nonetheless, we are not like the Ahlul Kitab who come and we say, no, uh, you know, uh, uh, we can't do it or make some excuses or whatever the case may be, or just simply be like I say, like they would say now, we are, we are and we disobey. Now, whether you say it with your words or you say it with your actions, at the end of the day, it boils down to the same thing. Okay, but in any case, 
coming back to the, the point here, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said they should say, we hear and we obey, we see ghufranak, like, you know, the when you come out of the toilet, part of the dua, ghufranak uh, is the first portion, and then comes the second part of the second hadith, the two separate duas which are put together. But in any case, ghufranak means we seek your ghufra, your ghufran, meaning your forgiveness, uh, O oh Allah, wa ilayka al-masir, and to you is our return. So, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu immediately upon hearing this from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now understand this, they came to come and put forth a worry that was on their mind that we aren't able to uh, to handle this, it's too much for us. You know, uh, to if we're going to be taken to task for everything like this, what we inside and outside and everything, you know, it's like it's a bit much. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, say, we yearn, and we obey, we seek your forgiveness of Allah, and to you we return. So immediately the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, they didn't, uh, who, why, what, nothing, just they said immediately, sami'ana wa ata'ana, we yearn, and we obey, ghufranaka rabbana, we seek your forgiveness of Allah, wa ilayka al-masir, and to you is our return. فَلَمَّا قَرَأْتَ رَأَهَا الْقَوْمِ When the people said this, recited this, uh, after hearing it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَذَلَّتْ بِهَا أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ they, in other words, when it came out of their mouths, when they uttered these words, أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي إِثْرِهَا Immediately Allah revealed, following up from this ayah, uh, to say, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنْسِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلٌ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ رُسُلِهِ وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِير Immediately, uh, as they made the statement, Allah sent wahi down. And the wahi came down upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ That the, the, the messenger, meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has believed in what Allah has sent down to him, مِنْ رَبِّهِ from his Lord, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ And likewise, the mu'minun, they too have believed what Allah has sent down. So, then Allah goes on. Kullun amana billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi. All of them, they believed in Allah and his malaika and his books and his messengers. And they say, la nufarriqu. This is not Allah who is saying that Allah does not make a distinction because Allah tells us, tilka rusulu faddalna ba'adahum ala ba'ad. That Allah makes a distinction. So the believers, they say, la nufarriqu bayna ahadim min rusuli. We make no distinction between any of the messengers of Allah. Now what is distinction over here? The nufarriqu, ya, it does not mean we do not regard some as being more virtuous than others. Not at all. Because Allah has told us, like I said, in the first opening ayat of the third part of the Quran, so we know there is fadila with difference between them, virtues. But this tafriq being spoken about here is like you had the Jews and they would accept some ambient, they reject others. But we are saying we make no distinction. We accept every single Nabi, whether we know them or we don't know them. We know 124,000 Anbiya were sent to this earth. We only know 25 by name in the Quran. Certain others come from the Israeli waqiyas that, that we know their names. Some are mentioned in a hadith. But nonetheless, at the end of the day, all those that we know are still not even a minuscule amount compared to 124,000. So we make no distinction. We accept every single last one of them. وقالوا, and then uh, Allah repeated the words that the uh, believers, that the Sahaba radiallahu anhu had said, and, and Allah says, and they said, these the believers. So Allah is saying, these Sahaba radiallahu anhu, Allah is calling them believers. So Shia, Kufar, whatever, they can speak their uh, kufr to themselves because Allah bears testimony to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum being mu'mineen because Allah says وَقَالُوا and they said not they are going to say they said past tense to show that these people who said it who were the Sahaba radiallahu anhum they are the believers and they said سَمِعْنَا وَأَطْعْنَا we heard and we obeyed or we are and we obey غُفْرَانَكْ we seek your forgiveness of our Lord وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ and to you is the final uh, return you know to you we are returning when we die 
inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un same thing so falamma fa'alu dhalika nasakha Allah ta'ala fa anzala Allah azza wa jal la yukallifu Allah nafsan illa wus'aha laha ma kasabat wa 'alayha ma iktasabat rabbana la tu'akhidhna in nasina aw akhta'na قال نعم ربنا لا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا قال نعم ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به قال نعم واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين قال نعم رواه مسلم so after this ayah was now revealed when the the falamma fa'alu dhalik after the sahaba radiyallahu anhum said the statement sami'na wa ata'na ghufranaka rabbana wa ilayka al-maseer they submission there and then to the command of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to obey the command of allah allah abrogated the previous verse so which was as you could see here لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ which is وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ وَتَفُوهُ يُحَاسِبُكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ so this was essentially the part of the ayah which was abrogated it remains in the Quran but this in other words was abrogated okay we can discuss that in the tafsir at one at a later point in time inshallah ta'ala but in any case Allah abrogated that portion of the ayah and Allah revealed in its place a different ayah and this is all the ending of Surah Baqarah, in fact. So then this, this ayah which Allah revealed was, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Taking into account all what the Sahaba رضي الله عنهم were worried about. So Allah says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not uh, burden a soul more than what it can be. لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت. That for it, it will have the consequence, you know, for it will be what it had uh, uh, what it had earned and it will bear the consequences of what you had earned in other words the good that you had done you will see it, and the bad that you had done you will feel it to use it in those terms so Allah said, now says the the dua that a person a Muslim should make and that's a, it formed part of the Rabbanas so the Fati Rabbana, if you were to follow along. But anyway, Rabbana la tu'akhirna. So a believer makes this dua. He says, Rabbana la tu'akhirna in nasina wa akhta'na. Allah, do not take us to task if we forget or we make a, or we err. Rabbana wa la tahmila alayna isran kama hamaltahu ala alladheena min qablina. That, oh Allah, do not put upon us a burden like that which you put upon those uh, before us. Meaning like Bani Israel, they were... They, the tests that Bani Israel faced were a lot more than the tests that we faced. You know, in many, many different forms, different, different things. You know, uh, you look at it from many angles. For example, we are given the uh, booty. You know, you take part in a battle, the booty, you can take it, you can use it, everything. In the times of before, when the Muslims at the time who were Bani Israel, they would also fight in jihad and everything with Hadra Dawud alayhi salam and you know so on and so forth. But they could not use the booty. They, they couldn't touch a blue cent of it. It was allowed for us. They had to slaughter sacrifice sacrifices for Allah. They were not allowed to touch the meat. We are told we can take the meat and eat the whole thing up if we, if we want to too. Furthermore, they slaughtered an animal. It had to be left there. And if Allah accepted it, the fire would come down and burn it up in front of the whole uh, society. Whereas if it lay there, it was a sign for everybody that Allah rejected your sacrifice. So, you know, today people worry about uh, being exposed. There you would be exposed. Name and shame. They, that's your animal and Allah did not uh, accept it. it's laying there getting rotten so many different things and these are amongst the smaller things there are many more uh, but nonetheless so do not place upon us a burden like how you had put on uh, Bani Israel before like uh, Hadrat Musa alayhi salam said they were given the uh, command to perform salah 50 times a day we are, are commanded to perform salah 5 times a day so there are many things. Oh Allah, don't make, uh, don't give us such things which are so difficult that we cannot bear. In other words, everything which is part of the Sharia today are things which we can bear. If somebody claims he can't bear it, then he's a liar or an evil person. But Allah has given us a deen which is complete, which means everything that is here is something that we can bear. Any case, going further, then the dua continues another Rabbana, 
ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به that Allah do not uh, burden us with, uh, do not place upon us that which we have no power to do in other words you do not put a burden upon us which is too heavy for us to bear in our terms and then you go further and you say wa'fu anna and forgive us oh Allah or pardon us waghfir lana and forgive us warhamna and have mercy upon us anta maulana you are our maula our protector uh, the you know the the one who the supports us and everything maula has got many meanings doesn't mean uh maulana you know maulana sab mali sab and things of the sort but maula Maulana is a term used for Allah. Maulana is a term used for Jibreel alayhi salam. Maulana is a term used for pious believers. Maulana is also a term used for ulama. So you find sometimes people who have no knowledge and they say, you can't, it's not permissible to call yourself Maulana because Allahu Maulana, but that is because of their ignorance and they have not read the Quran to see where Allah uses the same word for the believers as well. But in any case, then Allah goes further to say that the dua that you are saying is, Anta uh, Maulana, O Allah, you are our protector. Fansurna ala al qawmi al kafirin. So grant us victory over the kuf over the disbelieving uh, the people who are kuffar. In other words, grant us victory over the kuffar. But in any case, so as Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was reading it in portions, in Nasina or Khatana. The oh Allah forgive us, uh, the, do not take us to task if we forget uh, or we make a mistake. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said yes. And then uh, do not place upon us a burden like how you put on those before us. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said yes, don't, don't put a burden like this upon us. Uh, then carry it on. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bih. Do not put on uh, upon us a burden which we are unable to bear. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said yes. In other words, uh, oh Allah, don't uh, give us such a burden. And then wa'fu anna waghfir lana warhamna anta maulana fansurna ala alqawmi alkafirin after this once again nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said yes in other words think of it as, as saying amin 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 oh allah don't put such difficulties upon us uh, forgive us when we fall short we hear and we obey whatever allah has uh, commanded us with but when we fall short oh allah forgive us have mercy on us pardon us and give us victory over the kuffar and you know let us not fall with a burden that that we take to be so difficult that we cannot handle it Rabbi muslim and unfortunately imam muslim rahimahullah is in the rate of this hadith and unfortunately our time has elapsed so we will end on this point here for tonight inshallah ta'ala until next time we will end for tonight in for tonight and we will continue again next time okay this was the page so it was basically just one single hadith in that chapter, but nonetheless, that chapter being the end, we will stop for tonight. Until next time, we end and we say, Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.